Good evening, everyone. We're coming on the air with the latest on the wave of protests and uh, unrest taking place at this hour across the country. Atlanta protesters point to police shootings in our own city that are still unresolved. Several civil and human rights groups are seeking justice in the death of 26-year-old Jamarian Robinson. 24-year-old DeAndre Phillips was shot and killed last month. 17-year-old Vincent Truant was shot twice in the back in July as he was running away. Rayshard Brooks. Kane Rogers. Jimmy Atchison. Javis Benjamin. A Clayton County officer shot and killed 23-year-old Jabril Robinson. with the legislation team, so I can definitely ask them how we can work on getting Jabril Robinson's things back to you, because notice that everyone we've talked about, even when we did the last protest, they were saying, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't at least have his belongings back by now. I'm so proud of you, though. I'm proud of you. Stay on it. All right, love to you, queen. All right, bye. Good morning. Happy on? Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that we came in on that tip, but she called me this morning. All right, so Jabril Robinson's case. So, um, just quick notes real quick as far as updates, but it's going to take us some time to get these reports. So the first thing is that um, the DA, it's gone from call, call, Zoom, Zoom, and then today, first in-person meeting. Now, this is compared to over four years where it's been nothing. And this DA is saying that she doesn't know anything about his case. And even though she wants to reconsider his case due to our organization, she literally named our organization, was like, 
yeah, when I started seeing what they were posting and, and stuff like that, and I was seeing your interviews, it made me look at it a different way. Da, da, da. But I just need to know certain things to be able to feel confident reopening it, basically. She doesn't sound negative about it from, you know, at the same time as we know, it's like... We can't we can't really trust the DA. We have to apply pressure. She's got access to more information, and that's why does she need us. And speaking of that information, so with the reports, um, in the report it came out... As far as that witness that last saw him, um, well, they said that the the um, equipment started malfunctioning. Yeah, of course. Somebody has the evidence. They're just playing games. They tampered with it. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing there. Yeah. Exactly. Now I want us all to breathe because we've been through a lot this weekend. But these are things we have to know. Today, I think at 3 p.m. when we're speaking to legislation team, we should bring it up and just asking, how can we acquire Jabril Robinson's belongings for his loved ones from Clayton County Jail? She needs his cell phone. She needs his um, book bag. And it's our job to, you know, put that out there. Hey, why does she not have her belongings, her son's belongings? after over four years in a closed case, even if they reopen it, right? <laughs> Everything is documented. You don't need that stuff back. You closed it before. So even if they say that. All right, great meeting. All right, I got you, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna get some coffee. And then do you guys wanna um get started on the podcast as far as talking about how we're on I'm time? Gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tell you how off I am right now. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's going to be an easy subject today for you. Who? James Baldwin. Okay. Remember, um, I'll try to aim for 10, more than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, less, less than 30. 30. Oh, less than 30. Or 25. You're right. 25. 25. We're not standing out in the Slide a little bit more this way because you guys are actually on this side of the camera, literally. So like, like that? Perfect. This is perfect. All right, so we're gonna do wait, wait. So we're gonna do hi, welcome to the Just for Georgia podcast. My name is Johnny. I'm Mr. Ambitious, and today we'll be talking about James Ball. And then what we do after that, like you I'll, can say like if you want, Johnny, because you know mm -hmm. him more. You could start off with a quote, and then be and then say like maybe you guys could say like three sentences each about that, and then that's it. Whatever you may want to say. I press this button, or do I press the red button? Uh, red button. Okay. All right, one. Your phones are off? Yes. Okay. All right. One, two. Hi, and welcome to the Justice for Georgia podcast. My name is Johnny. I'm Mr. Ambitious, and today we'll be speaking about James Ball. He's my guy. Um, writer, activist, all around just decent human being. Um, he picked all of the difficult things to be an advocate for in life and did it with grace. Exactly. You're talking about uh, a gay man, a gay black man during the civil rights movement who was proud of who he was. And one of my favorite quotes from him was, I can't be a pessimist. I'm alive. So that's one of those things that would just always keep me pushing to keep doing the right thing and keep causing good trouble. That's that was a one take. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Guys. So when you see one take shot in my bio, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs>
I wish that everyone could hear the conversations I have with these families. Like, if y'all were to get calls and hear the times where Mama Likes is crying, and she's like, I can't sleep. I know I said I'd stop calling you in the middle of the night, but I just can't sleep again. Or like, waking up in the middle of the night because you got a text message from Jabril's mom, she can't sleep. Or the rare times where Jamarian's mom will call me in the middle of the night, Britt, it's just one of those tough nights for me. Can you talk to me about anything else? Can you please try to talk to me about anything else? Because I'm so angry and imagine not only being angry about your loved one's death but realizing that you can't call the police for shit you have an asthma attack you're too afraid to call the police these families don't get to rest while we have the privilege of being able to have the comfort and knowing that our family hasn't been killed by police so we're okay we're not holding a justice for sign for our own family members and again i'm not saying sacrifice your whole life i'm willing to i'm not asking for everyone to take that burden because it is a burden it's a sacrifice and it is a burden however at least show up when you How's everybody's face looking? Do we have down any shiny? Um, it's a little shiny. Yeah, we're, let, let me, it's okay. It's, there's a light on you. There's a <laughs> I was light. actually, I was actually worried about shiny. Here, let me use your paper towel. And I didn't bring my powder. She looks Sorry, offended. <laughs> it's okay. Johnny said he would wear his makeup. I just didn't didn't expect know. to be shiny. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Just, no, just, just. I feel shiny too. Well, the I'm light's not sure. exactly soft, also. Yeah. So. It's, it's more the light. It's okay. okay. <laughs> you don't look good. We don't look good. So. All right, we are speeding. Awesome. Let, let's let's start with this. Let's go with this. I want you to say, "I'm Johnny, mm -hmm. I'm Britt," and then you can finish it up and say, "And we are justice for Georgia." Okay. However, you'd like to put that. I'm okay. just I'm not trying to put words in anybody's mouth, but just trying to guide you. So, that sounds pretty great. Go for it. I am Johnny. I'm Britt, and, and we, we are, are justice for Georgia. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Do, let, let's do it again and look at me. Make okay. sure you look at me. So we'll go together. Okay. Yeah, she'll okay. go first and you finish it up. Okay. Just so in I'm case that was a little too. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll do it both. We'll do it both ways. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Brett. Sorry. I just need a funny Anna. Okay. Ready? So I am Britt, one of the co-founders for Justice for Georgia. Um, pretty much Johnny and I, the other co-founder for Justice for Georgia, have been protesting for over 150 days. We work with families in Georgia who have lost a loved one to police brutality as well as white supremacy. We set up websites, petitions, GoFundMes, protests on behalf of the families pretty much just bring the community together to bring these families together and make sure that they're good and well taken care of while they're fighting these serious cases. Talk to me, Britt, about the national cases, but then all of the other cases. So I to will say- that in without saying so. Sorry. I'm sorry, no, I have to like good. take a breath. No, you're good, take I a deep breath, girl. <sighs> um, when it comes to these cases, it's it's very heartbreaking because a lot of the cases that we work with, yes, they make national news, but then there's a lot of cases who you look them up and there's only two news articles about it. And so pretty much when it comes to these cases, we make sure that we spread awareness. Uh, we help people with social media. I know a lot of the, the parents, you know, they've never been exposed to anything like this. They don't really use much social media but they know how important it is to get their story out there. So they'll want help. I see all these families, they lost someone to white supremacy or police brutality. And they have to, you know, like she said, protest, you know, themselves, or they have to go out of pocket to pay for things like posters and billboards and stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense. We as the community should be lifting these families up, should be providing for them, should be making sure they're okay, because that's our job, you know, we need to come together as one to support these families in need. Just your first name, last name, email, and zip code. You don't have to um, provide your phone number. And we don't sell your information. We're just attorney the district treatment to the district attorney as far as we've been on here since May 29th and we got this many signatures when it comes to these cases. We you know, have this much support from the community. So, thank you so much. It definitely helps out a lot. This is when um, they were, this is 
when they first got them. I said this is when they first got them. So this is different than here. Uh, these are other, all these people right here are like the families that you see. Oh, there's more. It's a lot and it hasn't stopped. That's why I keep telling people like the civil rights era is not over. It's not over and we're still needed. I can be very fiery just because like I'm very serious about this very passionate about it and I want a lot of things done because there is a lot of things to do Johnny's good on the logical stance of like okay well we can do this but you know how do we break this up <laughs> I accidentally double booked two families interviews at the same time and so we have three families coming in tomorrow and when you turn this camera off, I just want to like give you a warning that if something happens to me, it's Johnny because um, I know that I already overwork us and he already has been telling me that. Uh, but I know that when all this comes out, you're going to be like, Britt, great job because all this work is getting done. It's just always more work. <laughs> Do you have any um buttons for DeAndre Phillips? We had some, but no. So oh, can I order yeah. some on your behalf? And I can give them to you so you can sell them for yourself, but I would like DeAndre Phillips buttons okay. if possible. And then um, I talked to Daniel actually about making another oh, DeAndre yeah, Daniel. Phillips. That's the one who made them. He's yeah. backed up, but I got good news. He sent me the template. So I'm literally just going to download the PDF, put it back in that template, and then okay. reprint that for you. So we'll have more of the Justice Boys and Andre Phillips posters. Yes, you look good, girl. Yes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right, last time I'm gonna ask, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Okay, so filming. First question is, if DeAndre Phillips could say anything to the people who are fighting on his behalf or who are protesting on his behalf that have learned his story and who are angry now, what do you think he would say to them? Um, I think he would um, try to congratulate them because they're doing a good job and I think he would want them to continue to fight because his story needs to be told, you know, and it needs to um, be widespread, not just in Georgia, but everywhere. Like, their names need to be out there. And read, hold on, sorry. Remember to breathe. Remember you're doing a good job representing your baby's legacy, okay? And I know that if he was here, he would definitely be saying he's proud of you with the way you describe his spirit. Because I know it's hard, but you do a good job. All right? I'm ready. All right. Um, DeAndre was just like a regular, I mean, he was a regular person. He loved to have fun. He loved to joke. Joan, really good. Like, make you cry. But in his humor point, he probably would be like, y'all can't give up. Y'all got to keep going. What? That's all y'all got? Gotta keep fine. 
that's the kind of person he is. He was very, very much determined. He was a determined person, and I can't say that for him. You're doing a great job. You are. <laughs> Let me breathe. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're doing good. You're doing good. And on a personal level, the, the lashes and the edges are still on fleek, so you're doing real good, okay? This looks beautiful, by the way, the way you set it up. It's really nice. Just remember to keep breathing, but you're doing a good job. Um, these people, they from Justice for Georgia. They've been supporting me and like interfering with me um, for Dre Dre and supporting us. They came. Who else okay, here? So, yeah, it's, it's just important for us to just come out here and try to help, you know, you know, each of the families that have been, you know, involved in these type of things because pretty much the, the system is working against these families from day one. And it doesn't make any sense while, you know, us as a community, we're not stepping up to help and do our part, even if it's not your family member, even if it's not somebody you know. Like, you should still be caring about injustice no matter where it happens at or no matter who it happens to. So we just really want to do our part, uh, come out here and support y'all and everything like that. And uh, if y'all need anything, just just let us know. Let and us this, know about future events. this strong mother, she does a lot, y'all. It's hard to come out to do an interview and to talk about this. It's hard to come out and even have to say that your baby is a victim of police brutality. No family should ever have to know what this is like. No mother should have to know what it's like to bury a child.